Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. With me, I have one of my oldest and dearest friends, Bill Tiberio, and also Bill's brother, Dave, and my brother, John. We are here in a very unique place. This is the American Can Company in my hometown of Fairport, New York. This was really the heart of this small village of 5,000 plus people that we all grew up in in upstate New York, just outside of Rochester, probably about, what, 15 miles or so from Rochester? And mine and John's mom worked here her entire career. Well, basically from the time John was one in 1967 through the mid 80s when she retired. And now the American Can Company is the Iron Smoke Distillery. 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 Which happens to be a club that John and Dave's cover band, Northside Johnny, plays at, where they used to have lines running 24 7, making a million cans a day. Coke cans, Pepsi cans, what, 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 what else do they make here? Vegetables. Every, soup, vegetable cans. Soup, uh, cocoa. Camels. Cocoa, like a hot chocolate, uh, yeah. Nestle's hot chocolate. Any kind of can made in the United States was pretty much made here in this factory, which is about half a mile long or so and it's one block away from the house that we lived in from 1960 to 2016. Bill and Dave grew up on Briggs Ave which is probably how far from here? Three quarters of a mile. Half yeah. Mile. yeah. About a, a bit eight long. minute run or so. Cause we 15, never, 15 a little minute long, A little longer if you're walking walk. with your guitar. Well, if you're walking with your guitar a little bit longer <laughs> but so John and Dave play in a band, Northside Johnny, that's been together since 1984 or so, something like that, well, on and off. Technically 2003. Technically, we, we technically 2003. Formed. Bill and I, we met in seventh grade. We started playing music together. We were roommates in college. And now Bill is the band director or music director at Fairport High School, where, where, we, all went to where school. we all went to high school and where we learned how to play music, which had the best, I mean, I think the best music department in the entire state of New York, probably one of the best in the entire United States. And Bill has been there for how many years, Bill? 30? 30, 37. 30? Just finished 37. Years. Congratulations. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this factory here. This is very weird to be in here. The last time I was in this factory was probably in the 1970s or so, bringing my mom lunch at night when she was working on the lines around 8 30 was her lunchtime, and i used to walk down the street and you used to be able to walk into factories that were you know 100 db of machines clacking and you know spewing out whatever you were breathing in nobody cared nobody wore earplugs or anything and my mom would just wave me in i'd stand by the window say come on in and you walk in and i give her her lunch and she introduced me to some people and tell some story and then i'd leave and go back home but uh, but this is really where, um, like I said, this is pretty much the center of our town. And we have another connection, a family connection. Bill? Yeah, we fit, you know, our parents, my, my father, your, your parents grew up on the north side of the village here. And it was a largely Italian neighborhood. They knew each other. Our grandparents knew each other, played cards together. Johnny was talking about how... Our grandmas used to play cars super late at night, Sunday mornings till you know, 3 a.m. They, they'd start till, at till the 10 sun and play till, 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 till the the 6 in the morning. So well before we were in this world, our grandparents were, were friends. And a lot of neighbors, it's a really tight neighborhood. Um, and it still is. There's still connections to, to the neighborhoods here. But they were very tight. And there wasn't a lot of money. So they entertained themselves playing cards, smoking cigarettes, drinking terrible beverages <laughs> having one pot of sauce on the on the stove for about a, a week right. and just resupplying it weekly refresh i don't think the pot ever got washed you know? <laughs> they had sauce and anybody That's came in right. there That's was right. bread there was cigarettes. The room had a cloud over it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we grew up in, real healthy. <laughs> so, we're still kicking. But our grandparents were... Actually, were, our, our roots are, are traced back to uh, a small town right. in Italy. Right. Uh, both of our families uh, called Castel Bordino, which is in the uh, Abruzzi region. 
which John has and, been to. Yeah, have, have you been? been to? Have you been? I haven't been. No, okay. and, uh, and there's several families, uh, Fairport families, that come from that same little, small part of the world, grew up right here in Fairport, New York. So when Bill and I met in seventh grade, I actually hadn't even started playing guitar, but I played in the orchestra, played cello, and Bill played the clarinet, and we became friends. I used to come over to their house and hang out. I knew Bill's parents very well. Then I got to know Dave and their brother, Mark. And then I started playing guitar right when John did. I mean, that, that year, basically, of seventh grade. And then we all started playing together. I actually started on the trombone in third grade. You were a good trombone and player. Man. You remember that? Yeah. Well, the trombone was so heavy to carry around town because... <laughs> My folks were working, and I was like, after a few years, I got a little tired. Well, I realized that girls actually don't talk to guys that play the trombone. <laughs> I switched over to guitar soon after. So then Dave ended up taking up the drums. Yeah, in, but, but uh, I have a similar I have a similar uh, past. So I started on the oboe. Oh, that's uh, right. Of all things, in, in fourth grade, uh, be, because apparently I scored really high on. The seashell the seashore. test. That. The seashore, the music app. I didn't test. even know what an oboe yeah. was, but I'm like, sure, sounds great. Yeah, and uh, and so I played that for about four or five years, uh, but then then I got interested in the drums about ninth grade, and uh, the oboe fell kind of fell to the wayside. But we so, were all part of that that formal music program exactly. at That's one exactly point right. or another. And well, really, through Bill, Bill and I continued on through. Yeah. Not only through high school band and orchestra but then through college yeah. Yeah. and and getting our master's degree as well and uh but interesting thing about dave is when dave took up the drums we ended up playing in a band together the monroes i've talked about it on my channel before but it was a the monroes with a z <laughs> <laughs> so we were kind of a punk rock new wave band we were a pretty good band if we could ever find our demo know, we had a four song demo that we made that had some actually really catchy songs but i agree but we never uh it's become we've never been able to locate it and a part of that story too is i was 15 you guys were a little they were a little they drafted me you know they were a little older so one of the we didn't we didn't play we, it wasn't very long but we played we did a show at one of the biggest clubs in the area at the time it was a battle of the bands i i had to like sneak in the back door and they kind of had to keep me on a low profile because i was 15 at the time but you they know, didn't really care back they then. didn't care um, but no, it was, uh, and then you guys played in a rock band, you know, in a cover band together in high school too. Uh, and so, you know, but one of the things I, I was thinking about, you know, as we, again, the whole growing up in Fairport thing, but from an early, from an early time, you know, when Rick was, you know, was kind of the guy who, you know, who knew how to play guitar and was learning, he was ahead of all of us. He was a teacher, you know, I mean, I, I think about that's what he does, kind of what he does now, what you do now. But naturally, you know, a common, you know, a common occurrence was Rick, John, and, you know, a few other guys at our house in our basement or whatever. Because you Rick, had a practice space. Because we actually had a practice space, which, which is our huge. Father, which our father built. Which our in father the built of our house. And my mom was the it most tolerant parent I could think so of. So one of the reasons that we were joking about yeah. this earlier that. Uh, because they had a band practice space, that's where we went all the time. That's how Dave got the gig. <laughs> that helped. That helped the whole immensely. joke about the drummer, why do you have drummers? Because they have a place to practice. <laughs> right. Their band was, practices, was ironically, relevant. at their drummer's house. But, but we would go over and we would play music all the time because you guys had a semi-soundproof room. You're the first person that had a dedicated basement practice space that we ever knew. Yeah. But we were learning how to play our instruments together, and literally together, in the 70s. But Rick yeah. was, you know, you always had that kind of, okay, guys, here's how you play whatever the song, you know, whatever the cover song of the day was, you know, here's how, here's that progression, right? And then he'd make us play, play rhythm and you, so you could lead over, play lead over. <laughs> Except for John, he wouldn't play rhythm. No, <laughs> but but the, still exciting, doesn't. the exciting part was also right down the street from here was a legitimate record shop. Right. And you'd get right. the latest album in the seventies that came right. out and, you know, the popular song, we'd learn those and we'd, sharing the records and going back and forth and it was it was a great time to grow up playing music it well was. and your your passion for listening started then with the records that we had my parents had 
an old fashioned, it was a cabinet style. Stereo console. Uh, what was it called? A high Whatever. fidelity, yeah. where the it looked like a piece of furniture. Yeah. You couldn't move the thing, it weighed <laughs> like a, a ton. But we'd have records on there and we'd listen in the living room and that they, we eventually moved stuff down into the, the music room, we called right. it. Had like the, this psychedelic carpet that dad thought was cool. <laughs> um, and, and, and he put, you know, he tried putting extra padding and, and he tried material. really hard to insulate you know, that and it, it was it was not one ounce soundproof that whole room <laughs> so we'd be practicing at, at night and at one point or, or another you know my mom was fine with it but dad would he, he finally reach his limit but those were those early days when zeppelin records were still coming out when farewell to kings came out when rush, rush. came out and yeah. you would listen to every part this is one of the things that rick has taught us was how to listen both critically and how to really, really dig into the deep sides of music. You started that when you were in like seventh and eighth one. grade, and he would and, always find like certain parts of the song right, that, that we, we didn't, could not we didn't hear. hear and say, you hear that? Did right. You, hear that? Like you were like today. the most critical listener, and this applied to life. Like you had a very strong opinion about what was the best kind of peanut butter, and, <laughs> and, and, and who made whose mom. Had the be it had to be grape jelly. I was pretty sure, yeah. not jam. Had to be, yeah. Jam was not a product. No, it had to be jelly. Certain <laughs> kinds of bread, probably like the worst white bread, <laughs> right. was what we thought was. It had to be cut a certain way. Our house right. always and had there, to have Miracle Whip. There was and only, right. There was only one way to do so. That's right. But that applied to the way that you listen to music, and it still is one of your passions: is how you pick a song apart and really get behind behind it and deep into it. We started that informally. When you were like in seventh and eighth grade, yeah, you know, we'd hear some great, great guitar playing, and you know one of the things you brought up in your shows in the last few years is how the guitar kind of went away in popular music, and how you know there's a reemergence of it, and, and you know that's always been kind of your most profound love is of, of guitar playing. But we used to listen to guitar playing, acoustic guitar, twelve string guitars. You'd have every instrument identified, and we were just you know really kind of digging in way back. Well, back then you also had uh, on TV the variety shows that had you know Glenn Campbell and Roy Clark, right? right. And real, real and, guitar um, players, yeah, yeah, and Chet Atkins, right. and they would they, these guys would be on TV, and you'd be, oh my gosh, so they were like the original, like the YouTube stars of today or Instagram stars of today. That the variety show had great guitar players back then. One of the important things, though, is the ensemble playing, actually playing with drums with the whole rhythm right. section, right, right, because we would always have a full band playing. Anytime we would goof around, it'd always be with a full band. And not only were we getting ensemble playing in school, yeah. but we were getting ensemble playing, learning yeah, tunes. Just in the basement. I mean, we would just, we would not even have a gig. We would just learn songs just to play just songs to, together. Just to play, right. Yeah. And Dave ended up being, well, you play bass in John's band. Yeah, yeah. And, I made the jump. And uh, Dave is an excellent bass player, excellent drummer and singer. Bill is a phenomenal saxophone player and plays, he's the most famous musician here in That's, Rochester. That is not true. That's actually That's, true. I think it's true. The, the, thing, the thing that Dave brought up is something that is so important to, to all of us is that you've been a teacher since the time you started listening to music and you really helped all of us and, and sometimes kind of directly like, no, no, that's not how that <laughs> And goes. not always the nicest. No. It was, sometimes Tone. it was direct. No, that was an approach. Is that like, no, give me your guitar. Give, <laughs> yeah. Let me you play idiot. the drums. I, I'll play that bass. Idiot part. was used Watch on occasion. What I'm doing here. But, but that teaching uh, component in your personality is something that it's carried you all the way through. And at this point in your, your life as a, a YouTuber and, and kind of a, you're a teacher of amazing diversity of music now. Um, that is something you've carried with you all the way through. And it started back in the basements when you'd bring a guitar over and it, we'd come over at night, our social circles were our musical was friends. Music. That's right. Yeah. And and we, none of us had a car yet. You know, none of us had a we girlfriend a car. yet. You know, we were just, we were friends. We would walk to each other's houses. Um, my mother would, had an open door policy. People came in. She knew everybody. You guys everybody want to stay for hug. dinner, you know. Yeah. 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 There, was, there was food. There was just, we'd go right down to the basement. We the should, fact though, that your parents were tolerant of us oh, playing yeah, any time was, was the probably the most important. Because we've all we're now we've all been we're all parents now, right? right so right. so then you have that perspective, um, you know, uh, of being a parent, right? 
And you know, honestly, from a parent perspective, my mom and dad knew where we were on Friday night. You know, I mean, at any given time, they knew what we were doing and knew where we were, right? Yeah. Um, so they I, were know. also pretty young at the time. Yeah. To compared they to our were. Folks. Yes. Yeah. They oh were. Yeah. yeah. They were like Your another generation. Were, were a generation yeah. younger than our parents. Yeah. yeah. But that connection to music was something that that was our social time. It's what we love to do recreationally. It's we invited people who in who liked to listen to music. It was a really right. special time for forming who we were as adults and became. Uh, and our parents were really integral to that. They really supported us. And sometimes we didn't even know that they were aware. Your parents were so into music and so into yeah. supporting everything you did, but they did it really quietly. They never showed up at the school unless you were in huge trouble. <laughs> you know, they never, well, that, they that's never another came, topic they for, were never for another came, day. They, they never came to the school. They, they were like, we're going to trust the They didn't teachers. come to the school because Bill and Dave's mom would <laughs> always get me out of trouble. That's right. She was the principal secretary yeah. for 35 so years. He, she was I an on-site to, advocate. I, I, I would get, get sent to the principal's office probably about at least twice a week or so. And she'd see me walk in. She'd say, okay, what'd you do now? And the I'll, I'll help. I'll help. And you, she you would know. literally get me out of trouble every single time. Write me a pass to go back to class, and then, and then cover for me. I mean, that all the time that happened. Right. Her principals would say, "Look, you can't be so nice to the kids that are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're, they're, they're in trouble for a reason. Don't talk to them." <laughs> yeah. Right. But she'd say, "He's one of my own." That's right. He's like a son to yeah, me. Yeah, but they're all her own. That's the thing. <laughs> right. Walking in here today was really amazing to see the, the transformation of this place. The fact that there's a stage here, you guys play here, and I'm just I always I wonder what my mom would think about this if she knew that that yeah. this had become. Wouldn't she love it? She, would think, it yeah. was, she, she would think it was awesome right? to have she it. Really not, you know, this so, was uh, as would our mom. Right? She would love it. I mean, those were long, oh. hard days for years. You know, to, for us to think about the kind of work our parents did to help us do the things that we were been able to do. Your dad was a mason. Right. For 45 years. Yeah. For, for, for you guys to get guitars when you were teenagers, that's because your mom worked really long hours. That's here. right. And it wasn't fun. It she, was you know, not. She it was had line a social, work. She had a social circle, but it was really hard work. And like you said, deafeningly loud. I'm oh. amazed she had any hearing left, but maybe she didn't. <laughs> maybe, maybe, she, maybe she didn't in those last years. But... You know, the things that they did for us that, you know, we, we have such appreciation for yeah. it now, you know. Yeah, she wasn't always 8 to 5 either. Yeah, it was, they, know, she they, tough, were, they were uh, late 4 hours. 30, like 4 30 to 12 30. Second, uh, third, third shift. Yeah. Well, and your dad yeah. was, a, was a railroad man. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So to have Long a, hours a music there. space, and there's other venues now carved into this blueprint here, this footprint, um, you know, other, other restaurants and breweries. And so to have it become... Because this building was dormant for what twenty for years? years. Oh yeah, twenty years. You know, just and a, it is it is a, an immense building. I have a longer video that I'm making that these guys are going to be in about our hometown, about Fairport, because I've always wanted to make a video about it. It's the most quaint town I think that I've ever been to. Uh, you can't really describe it, but hopefully the uh, video that I make will do it justice. So. Anyways, I wanted you guys to meet my dear friends and my brother and uh, Bill and Dave. We're all brothers. We're all yes. brothers. And, and um, I really appreciate you guys being here yeah, today. It's really and we really appreciate the Iron Smoke Distillery letting us have this great space that honestly could be in a Hollywood set. It really looks like a Hollywood set. It it's incredible. So uh, thank you all for watching. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.